Amen. Uh, <laughs> I was uh, apologize for my tardiness. I knew Pastor Linda when we pulled around the corner. I saw Pastor Linda's car. I was like, "Oh my goodness, I better hurry up and get down there before I get a text message from her." Like, where are you at? I would have been smart, like, hey, it's your turn. <laughs> nah. It is her birthday month. All right, give it up for Pastor Linda. Man. Hey, she is a gift to this sanctuary. She is a gift to that Sunday school class. She is a gift to each and every one of us. Woo, 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 woo. We, we don't even know the half of what she goes through. We don't, we don't know the half, the burden, what it felt like to be, to be crushed, to be, to be humiliated in the house of God and still stand firm, to still bring it, to have enough unction to, to reach out to each and every one of us to go beyond her own feelings, her own emotions, to bring us a word. She didn't care. She, she, she doesn't care about what y'all think about her. All she cares about is bringing the word. That's right. And healing. That's right. And, and being in position, being in order. That's right. That's, that's something that she teaches me all the time, and I love it. She's like, that's out of order. I love that. I love it when she says that, whether it's, it's towards me or not. <laughs> Because that's learning. That's a lesson. Yes, okay? Yes. It doesn't matter what position you hold in the church. If you can't learn from someone else, man, you, you, you out of position. Yeah, you are. <laughs> Strictly out of position. Yes, okay? Because uh, there, there's nobody that outranks God. And if he tells you you're out of order, <laughs> might be too late. <laughs> might be too late. Uh, so so I, I thank God for Pastor Linda and her birthday month, I wish we were able to, to go with you to Hawaii and have our breakfast. <laughs> it's, it's been too long. It's been too long. Um, but, but I hope that you get there and you deserve all the rest, relaxation, hear the waves. Man, yeah. smell yeah. that salty air. Yeah. See those beautiful mountains. Man. Man. I love the ocean. I love vacation. I'm ready to go. They still got flights available? I can make it. I can make it. Uh, yeah, long overdue. Uh, keep Bishop and Sister Barlow in prayer. Okay, that's all we need to say. None of your business. Any questions? The answer is none of your business. What are you doing like this? If you know, you know. If you don't, keep them in your prayers. <laughs> Simple as that, amen? Amen. All right. Man, that was easy. Simple. Um, and then and then always my favorite, Pastor KT. Yeah. Love that man. I love that man. You, you can't imagine. You can't imagine losing your spouse and still being present with the family. If I lost Danielle and we had the anniversary on the same day, y'all wouldn't see me. Y'all wouldn't see me. No, but he's here. He was there and in good spirits and looking good. You couldn't tell that it was the anniversary of the death of the love of his life. You couldn't tell. You could not tell. Man, he is an odd against every single one of us. I, I look up to that man because of that. Because of that. I look up to him. I don't know if I'd be strong enough for that. Be honest. I'm a big dude. That might break me. Okay? But here he is. Here he is. So, man, I love, I love Pastor KT. Uh, you know, you just hear his, his KT-isms just floating through your head some days. Man, <laughs> so it must be God today. So, uh, but uh, I, I thank God for, for, for that man of God being in position, uh, being on post week in and week out. Yes. Uh, health issues, lost the love of his life. Um, man, 
I just thank God for him. So faithful, yeah, he's, man, faithful. So thank God for, for Pastor KT. Amen. Um, I'm not going to be before you too long today because uh, uh, I'm tired and I'm ready to go home already. Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to be honest. Um, so, uh, you, you know, every time you, uh, every time Bishop, like, you, you, Pastor Linda, you know what I'm talking about. When, when you, you get a text, <laughs> hey, can you teach? Uh, yeah. First answer is always yeah, uh, before I even think about it, okay? Um, I had a crazy day, jam-packed day. I literally have not stopped moving since, I don't know, 9 a.m., um, but, but that's okay. I knew that. Man of God needed me. I'm here. Yes, so right. why, why right, wouldn't right. I? Why wouldn't I show up? Right. Why wouldn't I? Put some effort into what it's not even it's not even about Bishop, y'all. It's about what God needs. Yes. It's about what God needs. Yeah, the man of God called me. So obviously God called me. Does right. that make sense? Right. Okay. That God called me. Hey, it's your turn today. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. I have no idea what I'm gonna talk about. Um but <laughs> yeah. But uh, fortunately, I'm here today, and, uh, but, but, but I've gone through a whole bunch of stuff. Last night, I was telling my wife, I woke up, and I was just like, man, I, I just had a crazy dream. And it's been happening for like the last couple of weeks, just, just been fighting me, fighting me. It, my, my, my mental state has been fighting me. Have you guys ever been at a point where your mind is just literally cannibalizing you? Your spirit, you didn't, things that you thought that you were healed from, your spirit still... Mm, there's still something in there that's yeah. just, uh, I can't let it go. I can't let it go. I'll, I'll tell you guys, I, I wasn't going to say anything. I had a dream last night that, um, and, and I don't, it was really weird how it all played out. Um, so like I was doing some work, um, in, in like an unfamiliar building, I was doing some stuff and I hate plumbing, but I was like doing plumbing, but there was like wiring and all this other stuff that really wasn't supposed to be there. And lo and behold, uh, <laughs> my ex manager, um, my ex boss came up to me and started like talking crazy to me and, and then like started asking me about like my vacation. And, and mind you guys, the reason why, one of the things that they used <laughs> to start tripping on me or tripping, you know, tripping over me uh, is, is my vacation to Dubai. So my subconscious started to, to create this dream and he started to, uh, he started to ask me about where I went on vacation and who was I with. I'm only so much saved y'all. So I'm only so much saved. Only so much. Uh, you know, I try. I try. The spirit is willing, but the flesh. <laughs> so I, I said some things to him. And, uh, and, you know, we exchanged words. And then he, like, like pushed me. Not, like, not like pushed me, but, like, kind of separate pushed me, like, get back. So... You didn't have your gear with you, did you? <laughs> this is a dream. And I, it's, it's stirring up things again, but <laughs> it's, just, <laughs> it's just a dream. Uh, but I lost it. And, and, and I mean, I completely lost it. And, uh, you know, thank God for my wife was there because because she said like she felt me like moving and she felt like she heard me breathing and I was just angry and like she could feel it. But I'm asleep. <laughs> I'm asleep. I'm not I'm not you know, I'm not knowing what she could feel, but everything, the rage, the anger, the frustration, this this man tried to ruin my family the, these people tried to pull away the blessing that I had earned. <laughs> the, the things that I saved, I saved executive level jobs. Not, I'm not talking about hourly managers. I'm, not, I'm talking about people that make decisions. Yeah. I'm talking about few steps away from CEO people, okay? I saved executive level jobs 
and yet y'all want to come after me. So even when I think I'm beyond it, my, my subconscious reminds me like, hey, come on. Yep. is it still there? It'll do it. It'll do it. Okay. It's there. <laughs> I thought, I thought, I, oh, I'm delivered from, th- no, no, you're not. No, you're not. No, you're not. Um, so, so that was a, so I, I, I lost it. I, I'm, violence happened and I won e- easily. Uh, <laughs> but, however, I woke up and I was like physically like, like I woke up just shaken and, and, and like just confused, lost, right? And, and, you know, my wife kind of looked at me, and she was like, good morning. And I was like, ugh. Like, the, that was all I could say was, ugh. She was like, what's wrong? I was like, I just had the craziest dream. And, and she's like, man, I felt you. You were, it, it, But I thought the dream was right then and there. I don't know how long I was in the dream. You know how dreams go. However, I, I, that dream was real to me. Um, so so I, I'm telling you guys to tell you that, that even when you think you're beyond something, even when you think that you can look past something, you're over what has happened to you in the past, your subconscious will remind you and stir up something deep, deep within you that can throw you off. Okay, so I, I wake up and I try to start my routine. I get the text message that Bishop needs me to teach. So here I am, not even fully recovered from this dream. And I'm just like, okay. So I got to get my mental ready. Um, this wasn't the only dream. I had another dream where um, demons were chasing me, and Satan was chasing me. Satan was lusting after me. Uh, he wanted to kill me. Mm-hmm. Um, and and so, like, I woke up, and, like, I kept going back to sleep, and re- that dream would restart. And I'd wake up, and I'd go back to sleep, and wake up, and go back to sleep. So finally, I just woke up, and I'm like, okay, all right, uh, well, I had to go through the list. All right, he's after me. Let me think about what I've done. All right, well, I'm pretty good there. And then I'm like, well, let me see who's up in my house. Because that could be a telltale sign of who Satan really is after. And lo and behold, my son Trey was up. See, he's not knowing this. I don't tell him that. I'm not going to scare him to, hey, there's there's demons chasing you, bro. Uh, I'm not going to do that. Um. But I know that I've got to go into prayer for my son because I know what he's going to be facing day in and day out. Okay? I've got to go, right? The, the prayers of a righteous man availeth much. So I've got to go and, and, and protect him in his mind before he even steps out in that world. And uh, so, so that was, these are the things that have been attacking me. And you, you know when you've been on this, like, path and, and you, you just... He just don't feel worthy. Oh, don't, Bishop, don't ask me this week. Don't ask me. <laughs> I ain't ready. I ain't right. My brain ain't. Uh, so, sometimes I'm here, want, y'all, but y'all, see, y'all don't see it. Sometimes I'm here, the enemy wants but I'm not. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all, y'all have no idea what's going on in this brain. <laughs> yeah. And I might smile and I might wave or I might do something. I'm not here. I'm not here. And it's not that I don't want to hear. It's just everything else is pulling against me. Everything else is pulling against me. And, and, and so, so sometimes those vicissitudes, Bishop talks about it, the highs and lows, the peaks, the troughs yeah. of life will take you, will try to squeeze out the word from you. Because you think something else is so important or something else has your attention. This isn't what I'm, I wrote down, by the way. But, th- but that's, that's what I've been going through. So I've been struggling with that. And I'm like, well, maybe, maybe when Bishop leaves, he'll find someone else to teach. <laughs> maybe he won't, he won't ask me. But, but maybe God is preparing me for a warfare beyond what I already can even comprehend. So I, I say all that to say, be encouraged. If you're going through, if, you, if you've got mind fights, if you felt like I felt, Please be encouraged. God can still use you. You don't need to hold a microphone. You don't. It might be somebody out there at your job. It might be somebody at your school. It might be somebody in your home. Could be your family member. 
but encourage them. Tell them what you're going through. And then walk in your path, your righteousness. Ye are the salt of the earth. Okay? Amen. 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 All right, let's get into that. Oh, one more thing, man. Thank God. Uh, my sister and I, we are absolutely elated. <laughs> one more story. I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm sweating. Y'all, I, don't, I usually wear a hat because, you know, I beat up, you know. So I don't, I ain't got a hat today. Uh, outfit was too nice for that. So anyways, um, <laughs> so my sister and I, my twin, we, uh, we got a deal together. And it was just, you know. It was just a, a fantastic deal, man. It was it was amazing. My clients, I was I was tied up. I don't I don't remember what I was doing. I was tied up with something. Track, thank you. Track, I'm coaching track. Um, I was tied up. Lachelle showed my clients her client's house. Um, I don't have to worry about my my sister stealing my client. Uh, 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 another agent. Okay. <laughs> another agent. Right. So, so me and my sister, me and my sister, right. we wrote up an offer, okay? I, we, I was feeling some kind of way because her clients didn't want to accept any offers early. And I'm like, listen, we could get this done before it even goes on the market. We could get this done. They're like, nah, nah, we want to show. Okay. <laughs> so, so my clients, you know, they went there first available Friday morning or whatever to go see it. And... Um, and, and they, they just fell in love. I knew that I knew that there was a perfect house for them. They're going to fall in love. Knew it. Um, and so, but they didn't want to write an offer because they weren't going to, re- they weren't going to review them until, was it Saturday? Saturday after your, your open house. Weren't going to review it until Saturday after open house. Come on, man. Y'all know y'all want to take our offer. Anyways, long story short, I got irritated. So I sent her a text. I'm like, hey, don't they want to review early? We trying to write an offer. So Lachelle ignorant as she is, sends it to him like, yo, <laughs> we, we missing offers, dude. So dude sees the text message and was like, all right, we're reviewing in, in an hour. Was it like an hour? So, two hours. Two, two hours. So I'm literally at, at another builder with that same client trying to get them under contract. I have to stop. I'm like, hey, hang on. Don't put another thing in there. Okay. And I'm literally with my laptop writing the offer. Right. I, I mean, I wrote it so fast, I made a mistake, like, Uh-oh. for real, like, made a mistake. Um, it was just on the address, not a big deal. Um, but, but I, we got it fixed as an addendum. Thank you, Pastor Linda. Uh, <laughs> we, we got it, we got it into them. They got two more offers or one? It was one more offer, okay? They competed. Those two offers were very, very, very close. My client's was actually lower than the other one. By seven hundred dollars, they took ours. They said, <laughs> "They they said that they like my clients better when they walk through the house. You know, you, everybody's watching their cameras and stuff like that. They like my clients better. I say that that was just God's appointed time for us to work together again. So." <laughs> So everything's going smooth. We, we got the contract all worked out. Everything's going smooth. No problems. Here comes Friday. Now, I, I'm not going to say anything. I get a text message almost immediately after I sit down at, at, the, at, at the anniversary dinner. I get a text message. They said they can't go through with the loan because thus and so. Now, if y'all ever followed the saga of the twins in real estate, this wouldn't be the, the first time that that happened. A week before close, right. something happened. Right, right. The, the underwriter finds something stupid. Yeah, yeah. So, what's the only thing that I can do? God, don't do this to Lachelle again. That's all I said. You can't do this to Lachelle again. Okay? I ain't worried about me. I ain't worried about my clients. I ain't worried about her clients. I care about my sister. I said, God, don't do this to Lachelle again. So, so here I am at the anniversary dinner. My wife's looking all fly. Just, just. <laughs> wearing all black but lighting the whole place up. You know, that, it just don't make no sense, right? Wearing all black, lit the whole place up. 
okay? <laughs> but here I am thinking in this whole time, and I'm, I'm trying to smile, trying to have a good time, right? Because I, I, I that's my income too. And I'm like, okay, how am I going to plan for this? So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to smile, trying to have a good time, but now I'm conflicted. <laughs> now, and, and, I, and, and Lachelle was like, oh, you kind of, you were kind of off in the corner, off in the cut. Like, and I'm like, because I'm staying away from her because we twins. If, if we, I, I feel her, she feels me. If, if the vibe ain't right, we'd be like, hey, what's wrong? So I stayed away because I, I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to let her know. I'm like, it's too early. We've got to figure this out. Saturday, I talked to the lender. Um, I'm like, what's going on? So he tells me, and I'm like, I'm like, dude. He's like, well, do, do you want me to call the show? I said, nope. Do not call anybody except your people. Those are the only people you're going to talk to. And so, <laughs> so I got off the phone. I'm, I'm dealing with that. We're at Sean's thing. Dealt with that. And I didn't hear anything. Didn't hear anything all day yesterday. You know, my client's texting me. He's, he's a weak dude, so he's, like, <laughs> he's panicking. I'm just like, dude. Right, so I sent him just one-liners. Haven't heard anything yet. Don't know. Okay. I don't, I don't feed into his panic. I don't like that stuff anyways. Okay. Didn't hear anything yesterday. And I'm like, God, don't do this to my sister. Uh, so I, I start my, my adventurous day to day and I get a text message. Actually, I get an email and it says such and such. We are clear to close. I was just like, It's not a, see, see the thing, the, the thing about it, the thing about it, guys, is that it's not just a, it, it's not just a story like, oh, you know, someone made a mistake. No, 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 no. This was, this is federal guidance on how they have to go about this loan. Okay. Um, and, and, and lenders are getting in trouble. They're getting audited because of them not doing it correctly. Uh, so they had to push everything up the line. They, they literally flipped through the book to figure out what is a loophole that we can use um, in, order to, in order to get this guy's income to qualify. Uh, and so they, they did everything that they could. They found the right loopholes. It went to the top of the company. Uh, my guy threatened to quit. I mean, it was a big deal. And um, at the end of the day, God said that it was so. And shut up, Siri. And, and, and we got it done. We closed next Tuesday. And I'm just so happy for my sister. Because, you know, to most folks, you just hear it in theory. Oh, she lost $4 million. You, you don't know what it's like to have that stuff booked. Because none, none of us get contracts going <laughs> to see them canceled. That makes absolutely no sense. So we, if y'all don't, if y'all don't understand, this has nothing to do with how I'm, what I'm teaching about neither. But I'm telling you what God has done for me and my sister. Right. right. The right. way, the way you have to plan and budget. Okay. You, you might get a deal done this month, but you might not get paid for 60 days, 90 days, uh, yep. a year. One, one of my deals took 14 October. Took 15 months to close. <laughs> 15 months, okay? Imagine going to work, <laughs> doing your job, <laughs> and they'd be like, hey, we'll have your check in 15 months. <laughs> no, oh okay? Uh, so, so, so when we talk about losing contracts and her losing millions of dollars in contracts, uh, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. She has that money earmarked for that month that it's supposed to close so that she can build off of, okay, this is what I need to do here. I need to do this, this, and this. Or I can do this, this, and this and inject this back into my business. This is marketing. This is whatever. This is for my taxes. This is for... So when you lose contracts like that, it's a big deal. Now you're, now you're scrambling trying to figure out how to budget that back in. Or how I'm going to rob Peter to pay Paul. So I did not want my sister to lose another deal because she's already got enough things on her plate. She's already got enough people that are, that are flaky, wishy-washy, builders that don't know what they're talking about. Uh, just 
She's got enough on her plate that, God, you cannot do that to my sister. You cannot do that. And I thank God that we chose the right lender that has the right uh, um, uh, boundaries <laughs> that, can, that, can, that can play so, I mean, they play it so close to the chest with some of their, their regulations. But they are so good that, that God allowed me to have a relationship with that lender in order to close. So I thank God for all of that. Thank God for what he's done for us. <laughs> the Lord has done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Amen. All right. Oh, man. Uh, salt and light. That's what we've been talking about. Salt and light. Um, so y'all get your Bibles out. I'm not going to be long. Um, just got a couple things to talk about. Uh, we are in third row. Someone in the third row. Where, where have we been based out of? Someone? Part of the Bible. What book? Psalms. Nope. Matthew 5? All right. Kobe Go said ahead, that. Kobe. All right. You know, I, yeah, y'all give it up for Kobe. Yeah. yeah. Woo! <laughs> Kobe. My man, Kobe. Man, I, I, I talked to him on the phone yeah. the other week. Got and, it. man, he's, he's just got it going on. What, what, what scholarship you got? Buffett. Yeah. The Susan Buffett. Y'all, that, that's tuition is paid for in the state of Nebraska. That is paid for. You know what it feels like to have options? Now you got options. He's looking around like, all right, you know, uh, where, where can I go? Let me think. Man, man, Creighton's all right. But uh, so, so Kobe and I talked for a little bit. And, you know, I, I, got to, I got to wrap him a few things, you know. But, man, what, what would it have been like if someone could have called me? Hey, Brian, where are you going to school? Man, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't find out. I didn't make my commitment until March, my senior year, I think. It was, and I, hmm, that was last minute. Okay, my wife, my wife made her commitment. Was it June? Was it June or July? It was July after her senior year. Okay. Because no one stood up for her. Um, my athlete, uh, Jaden Bullion, he was number one in the nation in discus. Uh, he had a big throw. So what did I do? I got on the phone and called Nebraska. Y'all need to check out my athlete. What would it feel like if someone could have done that for me? Pick up the phone, talk to a college, get you that visibility. Man, where would I have been? So that's, that's the tirade that I'm on. So I have a good time talking to Kobe, and, and Kobe listens. So it's simple. It's real fun to talk to Kobe. Folks that don't listen, uh, I make it short and sweet. We were on the phone for 15, 20 minutes. It was a good time. And we talked about it. We covered everything. What other questions you got, Kobe? Hey, hey uh, what do you think about, all right, hey, you're on the right space. No, don't look at it like that. And, man, Kobe... Yeah, Kobe's on his way, y'all. That's all I got to say. Without, without telling y'all too much, Kobe is on his way. Hey, get, get, give a round of applause to his mother, too, because you, you, you can't be that well-grounded without a mother like that. Oh, we got... Cameron, you got the buffer too. Dang. <laughs> so, so I, I guess being salty doesn't work. Come <laughs> on. See, some some of us are salty in the wrong ways. Some of y'all are salty in the wrong ways, and you need to make sure that you are salty in all the right ways. Come on, Amen. Uh, all right. <laughs> oh man, hey, hey, let's give uh, let's give Simona a round of applause. She ain't here. Yeah. 
Exacto. Her, her, her dedication to the sanctuary, man, staying here, man, watching her, her kids come and go. Cameron's still here. Hey. Play, play with it if you want to. <laughs> you ain't going to win. <laughs> you're, just not, you're just not going to win. Uh, so uh, enough of us have, have, have tried the other side, and there's a reason why we are firmly planted here. Uh, a very easy reason. Amen? Amen. All right. Yes, Kobe, we are in Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. Mm -hmm. uh, let's go ahead and get that. Uh, NIV version, please. Okay. Talk to you guys about a few things, and we're going to go home. Yeah. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness... How can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trample underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen? All right. All right. Uh, salt. We are still in school. It is sodium chloride, N-A-C-L. Put that in your notes. Sodium chloride. Okay, we are in chemistry class. <laughs> if you struggled in chemistry class, I won't spend too much time there. So... You, you can look up what makes the balance of NACL. Just know it's one for one. That's why there's no superscript or subscript on those numbers. Okay? Mm -hmm. NACL, that is salt. Salt. There are a lot of purposes for salt. Okay? It is one of the most abundant minerals on earth. Yep. One of the most abundant minerals on earth. It is an essential nutrient for plants and animals. It is an essential nutrient for plants and animals. What, what does that mean? Someone quickly. Okay. Need, salt, ne to need live. salt to live, to right? Live. Okay. Yeah. It adds, right? It adds health. It's a healthy element, correct? Yes. Okay. It is naturally found in seawater and in underground rock formations. So Pastor Linda is gonna be <laughs> gonna be super salty in a good way. She gonna super salt. Yeah. The Pacific Ocean. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Don't have the fish floating because all that salt is going with her. That is a non fungible gift to be that salty. People next to her are going to be like, I've never floated like this before. I don't know what's going on. The solidity level is going to go through the roof because Pastor Linda is relaxing out there in Hawaii. Amen. All right, it is a food preservative. Okay, it is a food preservative. Microorganisms cannot live in salty environments. Okay, microorganisms, bacteria, okay, they cannot live in salty environments. It draws out the water from their cells via osmosis. That is why. I'll say that again. Microorganisms 
cannot live in salty environments. It draws out the water from their cells by osmosis. Okay? Everything is made up of cells. Water is an essential block of life. If you do not have water, you do not have life. When, you, when they look for planets, the first thing that they look for is water. Why? Because that is a building block of life. Okay? Salt is also used for seasoning for some cultures. <laughs> it is <laughs> it is used for seasoning. All right. Mess with your blood. Blood pressure. Y'all see those TikToks and stuff that they be like they got people trying to make food and they ain't no salt in sight. And you be like, that's just nasty. I don't care how it come out. That's just nasty. I can't deal with that stuff. Uh, seasoning. All right. Salt is used for manufacturing. Manufacturing. The creation of products. Okay. Salt produces plastics, paper, rubber. Glass, chlorine, polyester, bleach, soaps, detergents, all those things are created by salt. Okay. Uh, how many of you guys are from Nebraska? Almost all of you guys. Okay. So this next one won't be a surprise to you. Salt is used to de-ice the roads. Okay. Helps you de-ice the roads, sidewalks, concrete. Okay. Salt is also a fertilizer. Fertilizer. Go a little bit deeper into that in a second. And salt, lastly, is used for medical health. Okay. It alleviates dehydration and maintains electrolyte balance of fluids in the body. Okay. So I, I read over a list of things that salt does. And, and you, have to, you have to start comparing it back to the scripture. You are the salt of the earth. So you are one of the most abundant minerals on earth. You are, even though, even though there's a lot of it, <laughs> that does not change its necessity. Okay? It does not change. Usually we think about if something is scarce, then it's precious. But when you have so many different roles to play, you need an abundance of that mineral. Okay? So think about that. So when you, when you feel like you're nothing, you have to remember God has made me abundant. God has made me abundant in my finances. God has made me abundant in love. God has made it, me abundant in, in understanding the word and my anointing. Okay? I am abundant. Okay? We talk about living the abundant life. You got to live the salty life to do it. It's right here, okay? It's an essential nutrient, okay? Who are you nourishing? What are you growing? Because that's what that means, right? You are being planted somewhere. What are you growing? You have to look at where you're at, okay? Because wherever you're at, you don't usually stay. You move. We're nomadic, right? Things change. You get older. You get, you know, you get wiser, your situation changes, but there should always be growth around you. And if you don't have growth around you, maybe you should be questioning whether or not you're salty enough. Amen? Okay. 
It's a preservative. What are you preserving? What are you keeping? That's what preservative means. Okay? Um, they, they preserve things like beef jerky. That was, way, that was a way that they could cross the United States. They'd take their beef, they'd go from Florida, whatever it is, and they'd go up to Oregon, right, the Oregon Trail, but they'd have to put salt in their meat in order to make sure that it was going to be good by the time they got there. Right. Okay? Mm -hmm. So as a preservative, which we still use today, you need to be something that mm, keeps something, something good. The word relationships. How do you preserve your relationship with God, your spouse, your kids, your family, your friends? What are you keeping? What are you holding on to? Okay? So that it doesn't spoil. Okay? These are things that salt does. That's what we have to do. We have to make sure that we are living up to the characteristics of the things that he's already called us to be. Come on now. Amen? Yes. Okay? And so these microorganisms, let's talk about that. Those are demons. Demons can't live where that salt is. We got to be there to draw out the demonic. <laughs> We've got to siphon the water out of their cells so that we can take that place and make sure that we are there to help preserve whoever comes in contact with us. Keith and Lisa, everybody, you, you two are the saltiest people I've ever met. Y'all got everybody that touches you. I mean... Because of, because of the way you guys live, your attitude on life, you're not, it's not fake, it ain't phony, it's just, that's just who you are. Yes, that's right. And ain't, ain't nothing wrong with that. that that's a good salty. Yes, it is. That's a good salty. That's a great salty. And, and, and even, though, even though some folks don't stay, right, they still have the remnants of that preservation. That's it. They yeah. always know where to yeah, come back to, okay. maybe I need to be kept they again. Be thinking about it. Hmm. Yep. Yep. Preservation is kept. Yes, good. Okay. <laughs> Those are, these are the characteristics of salt that we have to make sure that we are executing on. We've already been told what to do. Okay. Seasoning. We've talked about this. Seasoning is, is your flavor. What is your flavor? What is your flavor? Not the Pastor Linda type of flavor where, you know, we just, we got a question. All right. Is she going to say something today? Flavor? <laughs> That's why she's laughing. <laughs> but but what, is, what is your flavor? What do you provide to the earth? What do you provide to those that come in contact with you? Okay. Everybody talks about, oh, it's not materialistic. It's not material. Ah, but, but here's the thing. When you got something. People want to know. They just want to know. Well, what do you do for a living? I hate that question. I smile. <laughs> I don't know. What do you do? What do you think I do? Okay. Sometimes I'm nice. Other times I'm not. <laughs> but, but I was at the roll races last year. And, you know, I'm, I'm just I'm chilling with my car or whatever. And uh, a, a guy, younger guy, comes up to me. He's like, he's like man, this, this car is fly. Well, thank you appreciate it. So he starts asking me, man, what do you do? How did you, how, how did you get to this level? <laughs> so why do you ask me that? I, I ran down the list, man. I'm obedient to God. I have faith. <laughs> I exercise my faith. I live by, I live by the word of God. I, I, man, I, th that's what I do. I'm a married Come man. On, I made sure that I did the right things. I started Come off wrong, right. but Come I got right. my life right. Yeah. I, <laughs> So much so, he was like, man, I'd love to, I'd love to come down there and, because he he's lives, I think he lives out in South Dakota. He's like, man, I'd love to come down here and have lunch with you. All right, yeah, not a problem. But, but if I was driving something that didn't or wasn't his flavor, he wouldn't have never asked. That's it, that's it. So when is it materialistic and when is it beyond your faith? Okay. So, so I, I sit back and I think, because at that time in my life, I was like, I was going through. <laughs> my, my big deal had, 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 was on the verge of falling through. And I'm like, man, God, did you, did you forget about me? I'm like, I just went and bought a car and faith. And I'm like, come on, God. Yeah. You, surely you can't be using me. <laughs> and he's like, oh, I, I ain't using you. <laughs> and that's why I have obedient on my plates. 
because I have to be obedient to the word, because I have to create or I have to project that saltiness out into the world to pull people in. If you just sit back and you, you know, uh, I'm not talking to you, you salty for a different reason, you, ain't got, you never pull anybody, okay? And whether or not that young man brings it, you know, gives his life to the Lord is, is one thing. I did my job. I told him what my success recipe was, and it included a lot of salt. <laughs> Amen? But, but what are you, what is your flavor? How do you project that flavor? Okay? Because there's different types of salt. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can use too much, you can use too little. But are you using enough? Are you being salty when the situation calls? Okay? Because sometimes... There's situations where it doesn't seem right to use salt. For example, when you make chocolate chip cookies. Well, guess what? You put salt in there. Okay? That doesn't seem like you would put salt in there, right? It's just a, a dash. Okay? Now, if I go and I put some sea salt in those chocolate chip cookies, guess what? Ain't going to taste right. <laughs> put too much in it. Ain't going to taste right. All right? But if I don't put enough salt on my chicken, like a certain... Never mind. The, the, <laughs> then, my, then, then I didn't season it correctly. Okay, so that's what we have to. That's what we have to understand is: Are we using our seasoning correctly, and are we applying it to the right situations? Amen. What are you? What are you manufacturing? What are you creating? What are you creating? Because we have all different levels of salt, different types of salt in here, okay? Not all of us have the same joys and, and interests and things like that. But what are you using your salt for to create? Because we know that it can create, and it's a plethora of different things. It's not like it's just one type of, you, you, you use salt to help you drill through salt blocks, <laughs> okay? Salt has to work against itself in order to flow through. That's different. Okay, but, but what are you creating? What are you using that God has already given you? Because he's already given us a saltiness, a certain level of salinity. And what are you using? And how are you using it? What are you creating? Those are the things we've got to think about. All right? And sometimes we just got to be salty to clean up somebody's slick spot. <laughs> the road of life is very dangerous And Bishop Barlow has laid down a lot of salt in front of this row and that row. Really, every row in this church. But he is dedicated. That's why he's asking for more time to see through what he's already started. Yeah. And and he has every right. Now, we don't want him to get too tired, but he's a man of youth. So that's right. As long as you got it, sir, we support you. And we're going to continue to lift your arms up. That's right. Even when you get tired. But he's put a lot of effort, a lot of salt down in front of you guys to make sure y'all don't slip and slide through the, through the roads of life. Because guess what? Some, all roads are not created the same. <laughs> some are really curvy. Some are straight. Some are wide. Some are narrow. Some, are, some have really high peaks, and some, some of them drop really fast. You don't want to be on an icy road if you're going straight down. You don't know how long your brakes are going to last. You don't know how good your tires are. But all that's hubris thinking that you know more. But luckily for you guys, you guys have already had salt laid down to help you, to make sure that y'all don't slide out of control off the hill, into a ditch. That's, that's what Grace Apostolic is doing for you guys. Amen? Amen. And fertilizer. So let's go to Luke uh, 14, 1434. done. You still want the NIV? Yeah, I like that. Okay. 1434? Yeah. Salt is good, but if it loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? How, how can that happen? Anyone know? Mix it with some more salt. Yeah. Even that, if your salt's expired, I don't know, okay? (laughs) 
And I think that's a conundrum that, that this is in red, so this is Jesus talking. Right. Okay? <laughs> Uh, that's a conundrum. Right. You, you can't just recreate salty. If you you lose it, you can you might be able to surround yourself with other salty folks. But at the end of the day, can you ever get it back? Not according to the word. Not according to the word. All right, verse thirty-five. It is fit neither for the the soil nor for the manure pile. It is thrown out. Wow. So, so no longer am I salting my meat. No longer am I creating anything. I've lost my saltiness. Okay? I've lost my saltiness. Now I can't even fertilize the ground that I need to live. I can't be a fertilizer for my family. You lose your saltiness, your children are done. They ain't looking at you anymore. They're off in another world. They're trying to go down their path because obviously the path that you chose and you were trying to raise them in, uh, it didn't work, so I don't want to follow that path. And as a parent, that ain't a good look. That ain't a good look. You're supposed to train up a child in the way that they should go. (laughs) Okay? Okay. So if you can't train up a child because you lost your saltiness, then which way are they going to go? Okay? So we've got to make sure that we stay salty enough to fertilize the land that we are cultivating. Our family, our church, whatever, whatever we have authority over. We are in charge of tilling that land and cultivating it and watching it grow up. And whatever that crop yields should be good. Amen? Right. All right. Um, all right. Let's talk about light. Back to Matthew five. Just had to touch on that real quick. Oh man. I don't have it highlighted in this one. All right. Verse fourteen. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. All right, put this in your notes. Light is electromagnetic radiation. Electromagnetic radiation. What what does that mean? Anybody? What's a simple form of what that means? What does that create, my love? Huh? Yeah, but what is light? What is it a type of? Energy. Thank you. All right. Man, I said, I said JD back there, man. <laughs> it is, my, my wife was right, but it is energy that comes from a source and travels through space at the speed of light. Does anyone know the speed of light off the top of their head? Anyone? No? Do you? You know? You know how fast? Okay. It's 3 times 10 to the 8th power meters per second. 3 times 10 (laughs) to the 8th power meters per second. That's pretty quick. That's pretty quick. So light is very unique because it it can move through all things. Hmm. It can move through all things. Okay. Uh, We we have to look at. (laughs) There's a reason why they measure space in light years. (laughs) It's the fastest moving object ever. There's nothing. There's no, there, there's, there's, there's nothing that can stop the movement of light, okay? It can be reflected, refracted, <laughs> reflected, but it can't be stopped, okay? Um, so, so that's why the first recorded declaration is, let there be light. First thing first, the light. The light, mm-hmm. okay? Yes. So, <laughs> so you have... 
Jesus, if you guys haven't noticed, the Bible just references itself. You guys ever notice that? Yeah. Okay. It yep. just references itself. Just back and forth, back and forth. Yep. Old, new, new, old. Okay. It references itself. And so here is Jesus now saying that you, you are the light of the world. Mm-hmm. You are the energy of the world. You can't be bottled up. <laughs> you can't be contained. That is who you are. You are coming from a source and it travels through space at the speed of light. Man, what what other explanation of God do you need? (laughs) There's nothing faster than it. There's nothing that can stop it. Right. And it's coming from a source. Who is that source? God. God. Okay. So when 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 Bishop mentioned that that we are the light, this is this is Matthew 5. We're that light on that hill. It was Bellevue on Friday because she walked in wearing all black and she was the light of the party. She wasn't trying to be. Danielle didn't walk in there like, I'm going to steal the show. We're going to be 20 minutes late on purpose. I think it was an hour. I think it was an hour. It was, I don't remember. But, but, that's, but that's how you should feel about yourself, that's that right. you can walk into anywhere and that's create right. that energy. That's right. And that is just a reflection of God because he is the source of that light, that energy. That's right. You know, you think about, I think I, I, was, I was reading the scriptures and I'm like, man, this city on a hill, it can't be hidden. And I'm like, man, Bellevue, Bellevue means beautiful view. Well, how do you see the view? You got to be on a hill. Right. <laughs> And that's where we are. That's yeah, and yeah, my last yeah. name just happened to be Bell. She took it. Now she's Bellevue. She's a beautiful view. Yeah. She has beautiful energy. <laughs> but that that just ain't for Danielle. That's for everybody in here, Betty. That's for you. Yeah. That's for you, DW. Yeah. Chaz, you know how I feel about you. Jordy better hurry up. I don't know what's taking him so long. <laughs> Jordy better hurry up, man. All right. Come on now, Jordy. Don't let me call you, man. Jordy better hurry up. Yes. Woo! <laughs> you, you can't have that kind of light and just, you know. That's right. That's flipping right. the switch. <laughs> yes. You can't turn that off. Yes. Man. That's that. See, that's yeah. it right there, man. Chaz gets that smile. That's beautiful light. <laughs> Jordy better hurry up. Yeah, you better. I hope he's listening. Jordy, hurry up. <laughs> you taking too long, man. That's some light right there. Right. Amen. But, but that's how you should feel every yeah. day. Yeah. Okay. You should feel like when I step in a room, the light of God shines bright. Right. And I can't let anything stop me. I can't let anything dim my light. Amen? Amen. Light is energy. Yes, it is. Okay. What else did he say in Genesis 1 and 4? Anybody know what the second part of that is? Let there be light. And there was light. And there was light. Then what? No. There's one more part in there. Uh Uh-uh. He saw the light. Yeah. And it was good. Ah, it was good. The light was good. <laughs> God already taught, told us from the foundation of the earth that Linda's good. Lucretia is good. Trey uh, is good. God already spoke that into existence because we are the light and we are good. So every morning you wake up, you got to tell yourself, I am good. God has ordained it since the foundations of the that's earth. That's right. How dare I feel bad about myself? How dare I get down on myself? God has already called me good. I am good in Jesus' name. Because we have it twice. God spoke it, which is Jesus. And then in the flesh, he spoke it again. Yeah, yeah, he did. Amen? Amen. Okay. Biblically, light is a symbol of holiness, goodness, knowledge, wisdom. Grace, hope, 
and God's revelation. Okay? In photography, there's three different characteristics to light. You have quantity, you have quality, and you have direction. Quantity, quality, direction. When you break down light into that sense, you got to think about, man, how much light can I bring to this situation? What direction am I moving to illuminate my situation or what God has placed in front of me? And what is the quality of my attitude, my light as it shines on the situation that God has presented for me? So when you think about your light, think about those three things to make sure that you are illuminating whatever that picture is right in front of you. Amen? Amen. Every head bow. All right. Yeah. Happy birthday. Have a good trip. Sister Pastor. When do you leave, Sister? Uh, uh, Pastor Linda? When do you leave? Friday. You leave Friday? Okay. So you'll be here tomorrow. No. Oh, no, that's my goodness. Hey, everybody, extend your right hand. In Jesus' name, we bid a Godspeed, safe travels, relaxation, fun, fun, fun. And bring that salt and that light to Hawaii and everywhere else. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Pastor Linda. Pastor KT, can you please pray? Precious Lord, Father, and Savior in heaven. Lord, we thank you for minister, I mean, for Brother Bell. Just Brian. Just Brian. For always making sure he's well studied before he brings an obedient word under the direction of the bishop. And we thank you, Lord, for your word. I was reminded when he was talking about salt, how salt is also used to make ice cream. I couldn't help it. Amen. It just And actually, making homemade ice cream, you got salt in there, makes the ice cream firm, makes the ice cream sweet. Which means yes. we're supposed to be firm and sweet and not pissed and not have an attitude, especially when we walk into places where God ain't. We're supposed to be bringing the light so that God is. Yes. We believe it and receive it right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. amen.